One of the things you learn as you start learning about accessibility is that if you don't have a disability right now, that you're supposed to call yourself currently abled. Because if you live long enough, you're probably going to have something that you're going to need to have fixed. My granddaughter is uh, deaf in one ear and has a cochlear implant, and she's got a uh, hearing aid in the other. So I'm really interested in some of the accessible tech for those with hearing impairments. We are in the Science Speak booth, and I'm here with Nicholas Wilson to tell us about a really, really cool innovation. Awesome. So uh, we, do, we are Science Speak. We do sign language recognition and sign language avatars. Um, in particular, any deaf person can sign into our software. It will recognize what they're signing and voice it out. And then at the same time, the hearing person can respond back, and that's shown through a lifelike avatar. So if we go over to the monitor, let me start over the video. So the way that this works is that if someone speaks into the system, in a minute, uh, the avatar will sign exactly what was said. And this is actually uh, completely AI generated. And then over here, as Nico signs back, what will happen is down here, whatever he signed will be shown in text and also voiced out on so the- Basically a blind, uh, sorry, a deaf person and a, uh, a, a spe a, someone hearing. without a hearing impairment would uh, be able to have a full on conversation. One person hearing, one person seeing sign. Yep. Indeed, and we addi in addition to that also provide captions for those who don't rely on sign. Um, so that way all individuals can have full- I'm sorry, say that one more time. So in addition to sign language access, we additionally provide captioning uh, to provide access to those people who might rely on captioning and not on sign language. So for example, late deafened individuals. Um, the goal of this is to allow uh, hearing individuals and deaf or hard of hearing in individuals to interact. And if at any point the technology is not working, um, you can also transfer over to a human interpreter. Um, we have human interpreters on call that can be brought into a conversation. So over here, if you see, I'm about to press the button. And then a human interpreter picks up and continues the conversation from there to make sure that accessibility is rendered. So back to the captions, I have one question. If you have captions, that would mean that someone who is deaf blind could participate in the conversation with a, a braille display, no? So we've done some initial experiments with deaf-blind individuals. We've noticed that for deaf-blind individuals, all of, and I mean in general, each individual is unique in terms of their accessibility preference. So some just want customization to be able to make some text larger. Others want an output to like a braille uh, display. But um, yeah, we uh, have made this system screen reader uh, compatible so that it can be used that way. These silly people, everybody seems to be different. I don't know how that happened, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel like the world would be easier but a lot less interesting if everyone was the same. There you go, exactly. I think Steve actually had a question. Uh, yeah, I had a question about at one point in, in the display, one of the faces was blurred. What was the blurring for? So that was during the part where it was the human interpreter came in? So right now, because we're showing this publicly, we decided that we want to protect the identity of uh, our interpreters, so we decided to blur that. But because this AI avatar is it's a completely fake person, doesn't really have any, it wasn't anyone's face. We until, decided, until they get rights. <laughs> uh, yeah, or somehow they get birthed, but uh, one day maybe. So this doesn't require any kind of hardware. You're just sitting in front of your Mac laptop here, you got the, the camera on, and you can have this conversation today through the software. Is, so is it a web service? Right, so you're absolutely right. This requires no external hardware, just a normal RGB camera that's on any webcam. Um, right now we provide it as a software as a service, both in this package, which is our automated interpreting system, our AIS, um, which we provide at $200 a month, and then in addition, we also have an API that people can use, which is metered uh, per minute usage. So I'm guessing, I'm just spitballing here, but I'm guessing that a human interpreter costs more than $200 a month to always be there for you. Oh yes, definitely. Um, and that's not the only issue. Um, human interpreters are fantastic for a lot of uh, situations, but unfortunately there's a huge interpreter shortage. So they're just not available a lot of the time. Oftentimes you'll hear about interpreters being requested for appointments and then the interpreter calling in sick and the appointment needing to be moved. Other times interpreters are cost um, prohibitive 
With this poor avatar, he's just stuck in that room all the time. He's always there for you. Yeah, we just keep on working him. Keep on working him 24-7. Okay, if people wanted to learn more about SignSpeak, where would they go? Yeah, thank you. Uh, you can go to sign, S-I-G-N, dash speak, S-P-E-A-K dot com. That's signspeak.com. Very good. Thank you, Nicholas. This is really, really neat. I'm very excited about it.